guest is the co-host of The Circus on Showtime, and now he's created a new media outlet called The Recount. Please welcome back to The Late Show, John Heilman, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. On this on this merry uh, Super Tuesday Eve. Happy Super Tuesday. I'm here to endorse you. Really? Yeah. For what? I reject. I reject your endorsement. We have so many. We have so many endorsements going around right now that it's time to lay some endorsements. What down. just happened backstage? Because uh, we just found out something's going to happen uh, in Texas uh, tonight, right? Uh, uh, Amy Klobuchar and I believe Pete Buttigieg are both going to Dallas to. Bestow their blessings and endorsements, salutations, and so on on Joe Biden. Okay. Does that. So the thing Bernie said was going to happen, the whole establishment is all going to try to line up and strip him of what is due to him, is happening right in front of our eyes. But is or, it not... or you could say it's just democracy in action, one way or the other. True, it's true, exactly. Yeah. Because like, um, and I, I like uh, you know, Senator Sanders, we've had him yeah. on the show like 10, ti yeah. 10 times or something like that. Sure. But to get to get stripped of something, you have to you have to win it first, right? That's true. Yep. Okay. I sometimes think that Senator Sanders not yet realized that, but yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, is do you think that this is going to be you know a, a, a shot in the arm for Joe Biden? Will it matter these endorsements? Because I don't really know a lot about politics. I talk about politics a lot because I find it yeah. funny and it's important and I, it helps me sleep at night um, <laughs> or shake less during the day. Yeah. But, what effect do endorsements like this have? Like, do all those followers then go over to Biden? Well, it's, we don't know the answer to that question. I will say, I was in South Carolina, your home, um, for yeah. the last week. Yeah, I was, there, I was there, too. And we got to see, all last week, I was yeah. thinking of you every day while I was there. Thank you. You know, the Jim Clyburn endorsement probably, if not, pro maybe didn't win South Carolina for Joe Biden, but created that giant margin. So there are endorsements that matter. Mm -hmm. The Jim Clyburn endorsement mattered. Whether right. these will matter that way is an open question, but I do think that one of the things that's happening is if you, that the problem as you headed into Super Tuesday was if you had a giant split anti-Bernie faction, 60% of the party against Sanders, but five candidates representing it, mm -hmm. you could imagine a world where they split all that vote up and Bernie getting like 35% of the vote could win all the states, right? Mm -hmm. With these people dropping out, it narrows the field and allows voters not necessarily to go because of an endorsement, but they no longer can vote for Pete Buttigieg or Amy Klobuchar, so where are they going to put their vote? Those are moderates. They're more likely to go to Joe Biden than they are to Bernie Sanders. So the, as the field narrows, it looks increasingly like we're shaping up to either a Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden race or a Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden versus Mike Bloomberg race. That's now, where we are right now. Okay, so three of the oldest people to ever run <laughs> for yeah. the presidency of all time. Of all yeah. time. Spring Each one of them would be older than Reagan was when he left office. Spring chickens not, right? Yes. And if you added all their ages up together, uh, you'd have... Uh, a lot of zeros. A lot of zeros. zeros. Now, a lot of zeros. I'm trying, big... to do, I'm trying to do the math in my head, and I can't. It, yes, they're old. They're old. And there you think, and, Trump's, and Trump will be the spring chicken in that group. Trump will be the youngest one yes. um, of that group, which is kind of incredible. At 74. At 74. Right? So, um, in a country yearning for change, what says change more than four septuagenarian white men um, <laughs> competing for the presidency? Now, let's talk, about, let's talk about South Carolina. Before we move on, uh, everybody knew that uh, Biden's firewall was South Carolina. This was where he was going to make his stand. Right. How big of a difference, in, 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 in sort of your experience of covering this for many years, how big of a difference can one state make? Can, can it really turn the momentum? Because he has no offices in California. He spent $4,000 on ads in California. Yeah. It's a big state. It's a big state. And I think if you ask the question, who's going to be the front, the front runner today is Bernie Sanders. The front runner on Wednesday morning is still going to be Bernie Sanders. Almost certainly under any circumstance, Bernie Sanders is going to finish Tuesday night with more delegates than Joe Biden. The question is, does he finish with 400 more delegates? and he's the de facto nominee on Wednesday morning, mm -hmm. it could be that soon. We could have that. Mm -hmm. Or it could be 50. And at 50, you got yourself a race. At 400, you don't. But the, the one state 
In this case, for someone like Joe Biden, who had been effectively left for dead um, after Iowa and New Hampshire, for him to, to make the claim that he was going to show the party that when the, we got to the part of the country where the party looked like the party, right, where it was a lot of African Americans, basically, that he could win and not just win, but win decisively. And then to do that it was a, is a big deal. And it sends a ripple across. We've seen in a lot of elections in the past, Stephen, where you know, the South Carolina electorate looks like the Alabama electorate, the Tennessee electorate, the Mississippi electorate, Kentucky, North Carolina, Virginia. And this is what happened in 2016 with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Once South Carolina spoke, you saw a lot of those southern states all go the same way. So could that happen again, where Joe Biden carries a lot of these southern states, where he's the one who has the connection to African-American voters? Yeah. And Bernie Sanders has had a problem with that constituency the first time he ran. He still apparently has a problem with that constituency. It's really hard to be the Democratic nominee if you don't have a lot of African Americans voting for you. Now, he has uh, some members of the hip-hop community who have come in on Sanders' side, and there's been a little controversy in the last 24 hours. That's right. And I know this has been very painful for you. Super painful. Super painful. Tell, you know, tell the people what happened. Well, um, apparently, you know, Bernie announced that he was having a, an event in, in Los Angeles with Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the members of Public Enemy, Flavor Flav. Mm -hmm. I know your favorite member of the group. Sure. The guy with the clock. Um, he got, he got mad and said he didn't want to endorse Bernie. He sent a cease and desist letter. Chuck D., the other guy in Public Enemy, the main guy, broke up the band, the group, over this matter. So Bernie Sanders is now responsible for breaking up Public Enemy. And, wow. and I, I, wow. Can, I can live with that just the same way I can vaguely live with the notion that Kanye is hanging out with Trump. But if Joe Biden breaks up Wu-Tang Clan, we're done. We're done. I'm done with Joe. Well, you have a new show. Uh, is it a show? Would you call it a show? No, I would call it a platform. A platform. An app, a website. Okay. It's called The Recount. Yeah. Uh, please explain. What are you recounting? We are recounting, uh, we are producing a lot of video about politics. So one of the things that we're doing is recounting the day's news in politics every day. So if you are one of those people, Stephen, who cares about politics, mm -hmm. cares about the country, but looks at cable news and wants to puke when you see people like me, yammering on endlessly about, cap about politics. If you wanted to get smart fast about politics, the first thing you do is you look at the Daily Recount, where in five minutes every day, we give you all the important stories about politics, what happened, why it matters, no bad faith, no BS, right to the point. Get smart fast about politics. And then we do a bunch of other so stuff. So there's no analysis, it's just news? Well, this particular product, the Daily Recount, is a mashup of other coverage so that you can just, as I said, get Get dinner party smart about what happened in the day if you're not focused on politics. Um, we do a bunch of other stuff. We do commentary analysis. We do narrative. Um, we have a, I do a, a series that is about the 2020 race with Democrats. We did a series about the impeachment drama with Neil Katyal, a, a, a prominent lawyer you may have heard of. We're doing a, um, a series right now called Behind the Glass. It's a focus group series where uh, we observe. We have a couple of political pros, Mike Murphy and Alyssa Mastromonaco. They watch uh, undecided voters talk about what's going on in, from behind the glass? From behind the glass. That's how they do it in focus groups. You sit behind a one-way mirror. Sure, you need a spit guard. Yep. <laughs> there well, it is. Thank you so much. Good to see you again, Thanks John. So the Recount with John Heilman is available online daily. We'll be right back with a performance by Mr. James Taylor.